It's that time again. This is Katni with your weekly Python on hardware news. Every week, we put together the Python from Microcontrollers newsletter. It is available through adafruitdaily.com. Head over to sign up and see all of the past and current newsletters, or tune in each week to hear what's going on. Adafruit is working with the team to safely remain open as we continue to navigate COVID-19. For more information, visit adafruit.com slash open safely. Adafruit is stocked and all orders are shipping. Expect possible delays as we continue to ramp up. Now is the best time to get orders in for your favorite products, including items for students. To find the latest Adafruit products and all of the essentials you love, visit adafruit.com. CircuitPython takes flight in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Wallarug posts to Twitter and Hackster.io, using CircuitPython with custom circuits to create a flight controller for Microsoft Flight Simulator. The author writes, For many years, I have used and played Microsoft Flight Simulator X. In anticipation of the upcoming release of the new version, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, I wanted to ensure that I had the best setup ready for flight. I knew that CircuitPython had a gamepad software library that makes your CircuitPython code appear like a joystick. I had an idea that this could be hacked up easily and made to suit my purpose. CircuitPython also makes working with hardware easy. James posts the CircuitPython Clue Qtbot, a higher level CircuitPython library to allow Adafruit's Clue and Electfreak's Microbit Smart Qtbot to communicate while maintaining all of the functionality of the Clue except for touch features. James writes, I am a teacher of young learners and as such the code was purposely left simple so I can use it with them. There is also a comment on nearly every line to help explain to my students what each line is doing. Video available from James Tobin on YouTube, and code available from J is for JT on GitHub. Tom Fleet posts a write-up of a 14-segment internet display by Joey Castillo. A somber scoreboard keeps real-time tabs on COVID-19 and other such adversaries, the big board of death. This project uses 21 custom HT16K33 14-segment display modules driven from an Adafruit Feather M4, which has four I2C buses to drive so many displays. The microcontroller is mated to an Adafruit Airlift Featherwing to connect to Wi-Fi. Data is collected via JSON format and displayed on the board. Details available at hackster.io. The display boards are custom, and the design is available from Joey Castillo on GitHub. Antelope IT posts to GitHub the source code and design schematics for a simple telescope drive controller for a telescope with basic stepper motor drives. The controller uses an Adafruit M4 Feather Express microcontroller and the Adafruit Stepper and DC Motor Featherwing motor drive. The software is written in CircuitPython. BIP is a project aimed to simplify the usage of Python for interacting with IDA. Its main goals are to facilitate the usage of Python in the interactive console of IDA and for writing plugins. In a more general way, the goal is to automate the recurrent task done through the Python API. BIP is also developed for providing more object-oriented Python-like API and real documentation. It includes both the traditional API and the Hexrays API. Code available from Synactive on GitHub. In this week's CircuitPython Deep Dive livestream, Scott streamed his work on the ESP32 TLS web access and memory. Check out the latest video and past videos at adafru.it slash deep dive. CircuitPython Day is September 9th, 2020. Adafruit has chosen 9-9-2020 as the snakiest day of this year. Much more to come on events and happenings to include a CircuitPython team livestream, collaboration with hardware and software folks, and highlighting all things Python and Python on hardware. It was with great sadness that the community saw the devastation of Beirut several days ago. So many residences were heavily damaged. It was a great relief to hear from our 2019 CircuitPython Day partners Lambo Labs Makerspace. Things have been quite tough these days, but so far all manageable. We did a roll call yesterday on all our maker communities. Aside from minor injuries and stitches, broken glass, broken window frames, aluminum and wood, and some broken cars, no real harm done. All the love from here in Beirut. Adafruit is dedicating CircuitPython Day 2020 to Lambo Labs and supporting NGO fundraising for the city. The Impact Lebanon fundraiser. Their focus is rebuilding lost homes, houses, historic landmarks, and affected hospitals. Campaign is available at adafru.it slash impact Lebanon. Anera and Global Shapers Fundraiser, an NGO which is coordinating with 12 NGOs including Red Cross Lebanon Division and Caritas. Their main goal is collecting funds to sustain the affected families until they can financially recover from the explosion. Campaign available at adafru.it slash Global Shapers Beirut. Do you have ideas or suggestions for CircuitPython Day? Are you planning your own CircuitPython Day event? Let us know via email at circuitpythonday at adafruit.com. In CircuitPython news, 
CircuitPython Clue menu can make your Adafruit Clue multifunctional by adding a nifty startup menu to select the program you want to run. You no longer need to rename your files to code or main to run them. Simply drag and drop your files onto your CircuitPy drive and this menu program does the rest. Video available on YouTube from James Tobin and code available from J is for JT on GitHub. After a long process of designing, production, and testing, the CircuitPython compatible keyboard Featherwing from Arturo is available for sale. Check out details from Solder Party on Tindy. Toddbot posts to Twitter a video example with complete code of CircuitPython on M4 boards doing CapSense Touch I.O. M.W. Weinberg posts to GitHub simulating Firefly flashes with NeoPixel LEDs in CircuitPython. Nitronics posts to Twitter their second project on using Python, CircuitPython, and Adafruit Blinka on the Zincberry to use Raspberry Pi shields with it. Mateo posts to GitHub scripts for using an ILI 9341 LCD with an Odroid XU4 in Python via Adafruit Blinka and CircuitPython. Rick Leander has written two new books on using CircuitPython, 10 Games for the Circuit Playground Express, and Make Music with the Circuit Playground Express, 12 projects that make music sound and noise. In this week's episode of Microcontrollers with Kinger North, learn about controlling model train speed with CircuitPython and Arduino. In MicroPython news, MicroPython was accepted as an organization for Google Season of Docs. This means that there will be a dedicated three-month resource allocated to improving the MicroPython documentation. There is a document with the list of MicroPython Season of Docs project ideas. The Inkplate 6 is a 6-inch e-paper device powered by an ESP32 and was recently funded on CrowdSupply. Help out with the active port of MicroPython for the ink plate. Details on crowd supply. The latest TTGO watch has been released on Tindy. The watch is based on an ESP32 with a color 1.54 inch display with touchscreen. It's proven popular in the MicroPython forums with a couple of repositories created to support the device. Daniel Thompson continues to improve his MicroPython powered Wasp OS project that aims to bring a powerful, free, and open source platform to the NRF52832 powered Pine Time Watch. His videos are a great way to get a sense for what is currently possible with this exciting project. Particularly cool, Daniel recently covered how the heart rate monitor feature was developed. Code is available on GitHub. MicroPython has had a couple of awesome lists, but MCauser's awesome list must be the most awesome of them all. There are a couple hundred curated links to libraries and tools, all with brief descriptions and grouped logically. Contributions are welcome. Check it out at awesome-micropython.com. The Tiny Blist 840 NRF52840 module is amazingly powerful. And did we mention that it's absolutely tiny? The creator, Hoan Hoang, has continued his support for MicroPython by submitting ports for the module and for the associated development boards. Details available on CrowdSupply. Blog my wiki post to Twitter, reading a PS2 keyboard on a microbit with MicroPython. Card10 badge post to Twitter, using MicroPython to interact with the Card10 badge. Mark Winnap posts to Twitter, Conway's Game of Life on an ESP32 with MicroPython and an LCD display. Video available on YouTube and code available on GitHub. YMT Lab posts a write-up on speeding up the line rewriting of a monochrome LCD with MicroPython ESP32 using SPI communications. Marlon S. Carvalho posts to Twitter, using MQTT underscore as over micromqtt.robust in MicroPython. Matt has published the last couple of Melbourne MicroPython Meetup News Roundups. Read more about what's been happening in the MicroPython community in Australia and abroad. In Python news, Python.whl files, or wheels, are a little discussed part of Python, but they've been a boon to the installation process for Python packages. If you've installed a Python package using pip, then chances are that a wheel has made the installation faster and more efficient. In this tutorial titled, What are Python Wheels and Why Should You Care?, You'll learn about what wheels are and how they compare to source distributions, how you can use wheels to control the package installation process, and how to create and distribute wheels for your own Python packages. Python T episode 10 featuring special guest Lukash Langa discusses release management, typing in Python, async IO, MIDI, and synths. Video available at twitch.tv slash nnjaio. The Real Python Podcast, Episode 22, Create Cross-Platform Python GUI Apps with Beware, is hosted by Christopher Bailey with special guest Russell Keith McGee. This and previous episodes are available at realpython.com slash podcast slash rpp. Free Code Camp posts to YouTube, Network Programming with Python course. Build a port scanner, mailing client, chat room, and DDoS. The number of CircuitPython-supported microcontrollers and single-board computers continues to grow. There were no new boards added this week, but some are in the works. 
Are you interested in adding a new board to CircuitPython? Check out the Adafruit Learn system for a series of guides about getting your board added to CircuitPython and CircuitPython.org. There are four new Python and hardware related guides in the Adafruit Learn system this week, including Explore the depths of your own personal ocean. Epoxy resin, alcohol inks, sand, and seashells come together to make this magical luminous ocean experience for your wall or desk. Each piece you create will come out unique, colorful, and beautiful. Build an ocean epoxy resin light box with RGB LED matrix image scroller in this guide from Aaron St. Blain. Everyone's streaming from Zoom to Twitch to YouTube and more. This sign will let people know not to knock on your door when you're on air. When your favorite YouTube channel is streaming, this sign will let you know in gorgeous Art Deco inspired style. You'll code it in CircuitPython and the board's built-in Wi-Fi will allow it to check the YouTube data API to find out when a channel is live streaming. Build an RGB matrix automatic YouTube on-air sign in this guide from John Park. This project is a neon-like sign with NeoPixels in CircuitPython. It uses a LEGO compatible base plate and 3D printed clips to build a light-up sign. These NeoPixel strips are embedded inside a silicone diffuser so it looks just like real neon. Build a LEGO neon NeoPixel sign with CircuitPython in this guide from Noah and Pedro. The current number of CircuitPython libraries is 266. This includes both the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries and the CircuitPython community libraries. There was one new Adafruit CircuitPython library this week, Adafruit CircuitPython Matrix Portal, one new community library, Pimeroni CircuitPython LTR559, and a number of updated libraries. As always, visit circuitpython.org libraries to download the latest Adafruit CircuitPython bundle. Included in this week's updates from the CircuitPython team, Dan now has HCI underscore BLEIO working completely for Nordic UART as a peripheral. This means he can use the Bluefruit LE Connect app to talk to CircuitPython over BLE using an ESP32 coprocessor available on, for example, the M4 Airlift or the Pi Portal. It is satisfying to finally see an end-to-end -end test working after being heads down in this code for weeks. He has a little cleanup to do, but will be submitting a PR soon. Jeff has continued working on the Sharp Memory Display PR, which was recently merged. STM32 support for SDIO was also belatedly merged after some neglect. He also did further work to reduce the memory usage on M0 boards so that we could add a new Japanese translation of the core. Melissa finally got the Matrix Portal library merged in and now it is part of the bundle. If you're interested, you can look at it on GitHub. It has been used in a project that has a learn guide written. You can check out John Park's on-air sign. She's been working with John Park to write a couple of additional demos for using this library, so be sure to catch John Park's workshop each week to learn more. Another big project that she's been working on is to try and get the STM32MP1 working with Blinka. She spent some time building a custom Debian image so that installing Blinka on it would be much easier. Although the image currently isn't working, she is working with an engineer on the DigiKey forums to figure out the issue and then she can resume getting it working. In the meantime, she is working on porting the PyTFT installation from a shell script over to Python so that it will be simpler and easier to add new displays and maintain. PyCon AU is holding PyCon Line AU September 4th through 6th, 2020. Check out 2020.pycon.org.au for more information. Pi Gotham is a New York City-based eclectic Pi-centric conference covering many topics. Pi Gotham TV is taking place October 2nd and 3rd, 2020 with a single track of talks presented online. The call for proposals is now open at cfp.pygotham.tv. Visit 2020.pygotham.tv for more information. PyCon India 2020 will be held online from October 3rd through 5th, 2020. Visit in.pycon.org 2020 for details regarding the conference. The Hackaday Remoticon will take place everywhere November 6th through 8th, 2020. It is a weekend packed with workshops about hardware creation, held virtually for all to enjoy. Call for proposals is now open. Details available on hackaday.com. Translating CircuitPython is now easier than ever. Translations make the project more accessible to a broader range of folks. Adding or improving translations is a great way to get started contributing to the project. With the help of fellow open source project Weblate, we're making it even easier. You can create a new account just for Weblate or sign in using other sites like GitHub or Google. If you write another language, visit adafru.it slash translate cp, sign in, and start translating. Looking for more Python on hardware all week? Join the Adafruit community on Discord and check out the Help with CircuitPython and CircuitPython channels. We're over 24,000 strong and continuing to grow. You'll find a supportive, positive community filled with like-minded folks. Join at adafru.it slash discord. And that is your Python on hardware news for this week. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to the newsletter or tune in again next week.